Hi there. This is Steve Bull. I'm the producer of this album, The Lost Tapes, by my old band, The Name. And just for this deluxe version, which is available on Bandcamp, I thought I'd do a little producer's commentary. Might be of interest to some people. And it's just my memories uh, a long time ago, so if I forget things or get things wrong, please forgive me. Of course, if you want to hear the tracks without this waffling on top, you have them already, so don't listen to this. But So we're starting with Whirlpool. This wasn't the first track we ever did, but it's probably the first decent thing we did. Um, a brief history of the band, if you'll forgive me just uh, for a minute. Mark Strobel singer, main songwriter. I'd worked with them a few years previously in another band called The Spangs. We toured and made records and things. But that broke up and uh, I went on to other things. He did other things. It turns out he was working with a guitarist called Andy Turner. And this guy was a lovely fella. He uh, was uh, an animator making those Tetley teabag commercials uh, in the evenings they got together and did some sort of crazy ideas and they had a little eight track set up actually pretty good for the time over in Chiswick and they were putting ideas together they weren't really getting very far because they were busy working in the day and one evening Mark came over to me at Oval Mansions and uh, played me some of their ideas I thought they are very good lovely sounding voice so we decided to get together and came up with a project and then we couldn't think of a name so we just called it the name for now and uh, that kind of stuck so we were called the name as I say they had an eight track set up in Chiswick um, that was very impractical I had to go over there every day and every night and it was impossible across London so they brought all the stuff and put it in my bedroom which is very nice of them a lot of money's worth of stuff and I was living in a very rough squat at the time not very secure but that's another story and we started developing the idea so uh, Whirlpool we couldn't record live drums in, in a bedroom so this was using a, a Lindrum computer which we rented for the day 25 pounds a day is quite expensive then just as a sort of rhythm track and then I decided to tune the drums so if you hear that on the intro the congas are tuned to an, a nice chord which fits in with the track uh, Steve Lamb added the bass a fantastic bass player who I knew from Kendall fantastic musician so lovely bass on this and the rest is just profit of five synth mark on the acoustic guitar and all done on a little eight track and it was this track really that made us think we we could do something maybe get a deal get some publishing which we, we did soon or pretty soon after this. And that's it, that's all I really remember about doing this track. Searching for you, searching for me. Track two, falling from the edge of the world. So much, come to life. 
Now, although these tracks are in a rough sort of chronological order, they're not exact. Uh, this was one of the very earliest things we did, when, say, when uh, Mark and Andy were recording over in Chiswick. Drums, we had to use Simmons, Simmons kit, which was triggered by a sequencer. And a Poly 6 synth, guitar DI'd in. Very basic idea, very naive, but you know, kind of fresh. I can't, it was, it was fresh at the time. Tom feels ridiculously too loud because we'd run out of tracks and uh, I think Andy was mixing this and he had just had to mix in the Tom feels live as we put it down so they're a bit loud apologies it sounded good then early 80s we're talking in fact we only had seven tracks to use because for those of you who've done this uh, one track is used up in time code, which is syncing the drums to the audio. So this is one of the first batch of songs we did with Andy Turner on guitar, just myself and uh, Mark Strobel. That's it for that one, really. Okay, so this is a track called Yesterday. Steve Lamb on bass again. Nice funky little riff there. Um, yeah, again, this was recorded at Oval Mansions on the uh, the eight track. Oval was a fantastic place. It was actually uh, right next to the cricket ground, which I got into cricket because of that. And it was an old council block, but um, it was deemed unfit for people to live in. It was rat infested and damp and no proper bathrooms and things. Terrible Victorian sort of squalor. And as they were being rehoused, um, musicians, artists, gangsters, all sorts of people moved in. And it became sort of like a squat commune. Um, Ian Jury and the Blockheads were living there. I lived right next door to Ed Spate, the, the MD of Blockheads. I had some crazy nights with them. Another band called the Choir Boys were living uh, in the next sort of section. So it was rough and ready, but um, very sort of creative vibe there.
and we came up with this yesterday. There's also a version of this later on with uh, with a drummer. Uh, this is the the Lin drum again. Myself, Mark, Andy, and Steve Lamb. Enjoy. Four, East of Eden. I doubt very much many people have heard this. Don't even think Mark can remember this one. And for some reason it didn't really make the cut as far as tracks we finished off and produced and gave to publishing houses and record companies but listening back it's a really nice track nice atmosphere to it again it's drum machine Steve Lamb bass etc but um, please excuse the quality on this too it was record it was salvaged from a cassette I found under the bed it'd been there 25 years and very dusty and hissy but as with all these tapes, I just wanted to preserve them and, you know, for the kids and the grandkids and things. And there's still a few fans out there, especially in Germany. Thank you guys for helping with this project. Nice song, East of Eden, I'll let you listen.
This is track five, Dancing in a Strange Way. Again, one of the very, very first batch of tracks we did before Oval Mansions days. Um, everyone had big haircuts and silly hats, and you know, it was kind of new romantic times. We used to go out clubbing with the likes of uh, Boy George and people like that, you know. Billy Idol and the cult and people like that were hanging about. The Cure. Again, this is one with the Simmons drums. Uh, again, the toms are a bit loud, of course, as they were spun in at the end. Nice guitar, I think that's probably Mark playing that bit there. He was actually a really good guitarist uh, in the Spangs. We'd been produced by Chris Hughes. We worked with him a lot on his guitar style, very kind of open chords and jangly indie style, you know? Love it. And people did dance pretty weird in the in the 80s, down at the Hippodrome and places like that. Lyceum. It's just me and Mark and Andy on this one. No bass, no drums, just drum machine sequences. Nice whale sounds there, Andy. Lovely guy, Andy. Where is he now? That's it for that one. Let's move on. Six, the mirror breaks. Big fat Korg Poly Six synth that wasn't even my synth, I borrowed it off Andy, I think. Synth bass, Simmons drums. And again, this was one of the very first four or five tracks we ever did early days nice bass I think that's Mark Strobe on bass is a pretty good all round musician and Mark had a job he's working in his family's print shop very boring job and it's quite creative in a way but you know he's printing up brochures and posters and leaflets and things but he used to dream he used to go from the strobel land i used to call it he used to dream of lyrics and songs and ideas very creative creative guy and uh, turned it all into these these songs I mean, it maybe sounds a bit dated now but it was of its time, so that's the mirror breaks. 
Oh, that bit there just sounds a bit like Dollar I was listening to at the time. Trevor Horn, producer, though. Good, good guy. Don't tell anyone I was listening to Dollar. Okay, next. I keep on running, track seven. You can tell I used to be a DJ, can't you? Not. Backwards echo, that was quite interesting. Backwards reverb. You had to take the tape off, turn it around, record the reverb and then turn it back again. Simmons drums, a lot of sequences. This will be the last of the batch of tracks we did in West London. Oh, acoustic guitar there. Again, it's very much at that time, early 80s, dancey, disco-y type stuff. This is again this original trio of the name Mark Strobel, Andy Tanner, and myself. Pretty good noise for, for three guys, I think, anyway. I'll let you listen and uh, I'll see you on the next track. The Driving Rain, track eight on this compilation. Yeah, this was a pretty big song for us. Um, we did several versions of it, and this one became a single which we pressed up ourselves, just seven inch vinyl. Pressed up something like 500 copies, you know. Idea is give it to gigs, give it to publishers, managers, and that's what we did. And uh, we got a copy across to a guy called Johannes Vessels over in Germany, and he was a, like a local promoter. I'd worked with him before Kevin Coin Band, and he was doing his big festival called the Schuttor Festival, which was massive. Man, I mean, he's playing. I played there with Kevin, seventy thousand people. 
So we were hoping, you know, he might put us on that or something, but which he did eventually. But it led to publishing deal, EMI Music. Originally just Mark and myself, and then the, the band was added later, and they all signed it too. So we got a pretty nice advance, got some equipment out of it. And so hopefully the recordings will start to sound a little bit better now. This was rescued from the quarter inch tape, so you can hear some drop out on some of the channels, but the vinyl was really crackly, so it's better to listen on this. Drum machine on this is a sequential circuits drum tracks for all your gear nerds. I wish I still had that, that'd be worth a small fortune now. But again, it's great because you could tune the drums and raise the pitch, lower the pitch. Lovely bass on this, again, Steve Lamb. He was really fantastic, so a Jacko Pastoria style, funky jazzy style, which I think suited the track. Andy Turner on the electric. Mark's playing acoustic. And Mark and I are doing the backing vocals. So again, this was recorded in the bedroom at the Oval Mansions. But uh, opened a lot of doors for us, this track, and uh, it ended up on our debut album. But I prefer this version of all the versions we did, so have a good listen to this one, preferably without me droning on the top of it. Driving Rain, that's that one. The wind blows on clifftops, there's a deep blue sky that's just about to cry. It's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. I'm gonna stake my claim In the driving rain 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 Spirit World and this was on the B-side of our vinyl single of The Driving Rain if you can get a hold of a copy of that on eBay it must be worth ooh, nearly five pounds big reverb I was really into reverb analog delays and things in those days and Still am, really. Synth on this is a Prophet 5. And I can add that to the list of things I wish I'd kept. I'd be a rich man if I had all this stuff, this stuff now. Not 
nice song about dreams, falling in love in your dreams, if that's possible. Lovely, uh, good lyrics from Mark there. It was a really slow, moody ballad, so I don't think we ever played this one live, maybe once or twice on festivals and things. Nice track. I really like the fade out. There's, I'll let you listen in a minute. The, the bass and the keyboard sort of swap lines and join up together and nice melody. Lovely stuff. Great depression. Great depression. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Now, a story on this one. It may sound like it was recorded live with an audience, but it wasn't. We were on tour in Germany, and one of our favorite venues was a place in Munster called the Oval. It's kind of really funky nightclub disco sort of place where they had cars coming out the walls and traffic lights for tables and you, that kind of stuff really great place so they also had a 24 track studio it was an old cinema great great big room I think and um, they had a 24 track so we had a couple of days off and we said can we do some demos there and this was one of them they had a great engineer we used to call him Nick Kershaw because he looked just like Nick Kershaw star at the time kids um, so this was recorded live all the band playing together this is now ah, I forgot to tell you Brian Gatons from Scotland on drums we finally auditioned and got, got a great drummer in Brian from Greenock Glasgow lovely guy and also, you'll notice 
the guitar is being featured a bit more now. This is Steve Crittle, Stephen Philip Crittle from Croydon, England. Copper top drain pipe of a man. But a genius guitarist. Well up with the sounds of the day. Clever use of, of echo, distortion, whammy bar, that sort of thing. Adrian Ballou type style, you know. And plenty of others. So we recorded this. The band was quite tight. We were on tour. We whacked a few tracks down. And then later on, we were supposed to be making a live album and we were going to use this as an extra track. So that's why we've got the audience on the front and on the back and in the middle to try and make it sound as if it was a live track. So we didn't have enough live tracks at that time. But it was never used until now. So enjoy the Great Depression. Really old synth sounds. Prophet 5 again. Walk into the world, track 11. Again, excuse the quality, rescued from a cassette, this one. And it's just a demo, one of the first versions of this track. You can hear Mark still trying to find the, the phrasing. But this is what we did, we used to put a backing track down, just keyboards, drum machine. And then he would put the headphones on and, and just sort of go into some sort of hypnotic trance and sing along with his eyes closed and try and get the words and the, and the tune. And this is one of those, so the, the vocal's not mixed in properly. It's just him writing the song before your very ears. Nice piano, that's a Yamaha CP70 sort of a semi-acoustic piano. Again, wish I still had that. So it's interesting, you can hear how these tracks evolved. Um, this was the first demo. It went on to be on our first album. The full band playing it. And also later on this album you can hear Mark and myself doing a radio broadcast, just the two of us playing this track again. So, good song, Walk Into The World, with your eyes wide open.
Southern Girl, track 12. Sounds moved on a bit here. As I say, we got a deal with EMI Music Publishing, and they had a little studio called KPM. Keith Prowse Music, it used to be. On Denmark Street in the heart of London's West End. And part of our deal was we, we could use this studio when we could get into it um, to record demos. That was a pretty basic studio for the time, but uh, to us it was like Abbey Road, you know, they had a piano, Neumann mics, fantastic desk, full tech EQ, lexicon reverb, oh no, they had a plate reverb, that's it, in the basement. So we used to get in here whenever we could, but we had to fight with other bands that were signed to EMI, and so occasionally we'd get in. Instead of doing demos, we used it to try and make master tracks for our for our singles and B-sides and things, and this was one of those. And this was when Steve Criddle had just about just joined the band, but um, this is actually Mark playing the rhythm guitar. I remember it well. He had this great open chord style, as you, as you can hear. And we just double tracked that, left and right, bit of delay. Sounds wonderful. And I think the solo is, uh, is Steve, Steve Criddle. But he very graciously said, OK, Mark, you do the rhythm, That's, that sounds good, so... Yeah, and it's called Southern Girl, but as I remember, I think it's written about a Northern Girl, so it's kind of code there for Mark, but you'd have to ask him. It sounds a bit like the cult who we toured with in those days, you know, She Sells Sanctuary, that, that track. That's the KPM piano. You can hear the wow off of the tape. This was from quarter inch tape again. And this drum machine, um, copying Brian's parts, I think, and which we used to do a lot. We used to get Brian to write the parts and then we'd, we'd copy them and play them with a drum machine. Because you'd get more control over the, the sound that way, I guess, you know. Plus drum machines. Don't drink. Sorry, Bri. Yeah, that's Steve Grittle. Guitar solo. Zing of the piano string. So I'll let you go on this one, Southern Girl.
Track 13, Lucky for Some, New Day. This is just the demo again. It sounds pretty good. I think this is recorded at KPM again. I'm not entirely sure about this one. And soon after this, we got our first proper record deal with China Records. So this version sounds very close to the one that made it onto the album, Dangerous Times album. Not much to say about this one. It's quite a basic lyric and it's all about the atmosphere of the guitars and the synths. So I'll see you on track 14. Fourteen. I won't forget you. Another demo. This was very popular 
at the time with friends and people around the band. And a nice cheery sort of poppy song. Good melodies, good, good lyrics. Um, but it never made it to any albums or anything, so most of you won't have heard this. Uh, this is an early version of this before the guitar again, I think. It's just done on DX7. I think that's not Steve on guitar, that's probably me or Mark just filling in while he was getting his hair done or something. I think we were listening to bands like Talk Talk at the time. Oh, maybe a bit of Simple Minds in their early version. So that's a nice rare track for you, unreleased. The unforgettable I won't forget you, so let's move on. This is a demo version of Jesus and the Devil. A big track for us, became a big part of our show, was on the album and everything. But this is one of the early demos, as I say, with a Lindrum, not the actual drums, which gives it a nice quality, a lot of space. And on the deluxe version, later on, you'll hear a 12-inch edit, which we did at Black Barn Studios. This is very much a home demo version.
But I think Mark was going through some difficult times and uh, lyrics started getting a bit darker from now on. That's just my recollection anyway. A lot of DX7 on this. I've still got one of those, but blue smoke pours out of it when I switch it on, so I wish I didn't have that. Yeah, this is Steve Crittle on guitar. Very hissy vocals there. Cheap mics. But, you know, could be of interest to some people because a lot of people like this track. Dangerous Times. Track 16, I think. Now again, this was a major track for us. It went on to be a big single. Did pretty well in Europe and we did a video of it and everything. But this is an early demo. Not the first. We worked on this track a lot and did very many versions of it. Um, but this one you can hear sounds a bit Trevor Horn influenced with the 
the low bass DX7 bass thing. But this one used to go down a storm and uh, in Germany especially, Hamburg, places like that. Great guitar work on this, uh, brilliant solo on this, so that's why I've used this version, I think. So enjoy the guitar solo, and I'll see you on the next one. This is track 17 on the deluxe version called Lost Generation. You may hear some little crackles on this one, it's an interesting story. This track and the next one were actually outtakes that we recorded at Black Barn Studios in Ripley, Surrey. Well, we met Teo, a uh, lovely sound man. That's another story, but. Yeah, these two were, were outtakes, but somehow they ended up on vinyl B-sides. Um, I think they were just for promotional reasons, you know, to give out to DJs and promoters and things. But I don't even have a copy of this, so um, I managed to track down a guy, Mickey Reptile's house, his name is, over in Peru. Believe it or not, I wasn't snorting anything. It's, it was actually, he's from Peru and he sent me these tracks over the internet. Actually ripped from the vinyl. And these records, you know, they're 25 years old, 21 years old, something like that. 
so he's kept them really well and uh, I've remastered them but I didn't need to do much because I love the sound of vinyl so it's just EQ bit level and this is the vinyl version of Lost Generation. Charmed, track 18. I just ditto everything I said on track 17. This is another one from vinyl. Kindly sent in by Reptile's House in, in Peru. Again, it's remastered digitally and everything, but the warmth and sort of crunch, a little bit of distortion of the vinyl is there. Now this track was never really finished, so it was a bit naughty of uh, China Records to put it out on some sort of single, but uh, there you go, they were getting their money's worth, and um, and why not, can't say as I blame them really. So this is Charmed. Recorded a black man, as I said, and Teo Miller was the sort of tape op guy there. Young lad, twiddled a few knobs, you know, that, and made the coffees, and he became a really good friend. He still is best mates with Steve Crittle today, I think. And I'd love to see him again. Where are you, Teo? But he went on to, to be our sound man live, toured with us, drove us all crazy in the van with his sound effect noises and impressions but in a lovely guy and he went on to become a successful producer himself working with Brit pretenders and daisy chainsaw and a few other bands which escaped me but talented guy so this reminds me of him when we met him next
track 19, The Last War Song. I've had a lot of requests to, to include this one. It was actually released as a CD single back in the day. But so few copies were pressed and it's very hard to find now. So I've remastered it, taken out a bit of the harsh 7.5k if for all you technos. But it sounds pretty good. Now the story on this one was produced by Mike Hedges, who's a very well-known top producer, Michael Hedges, with his assistant Mel Wesson, who's, uh, he was the programmer, Fairlight programmer. He's working with the likes of Hans Zimmer today, he's, he's a top man, Mel. I actually bought my profit off of him. And again, turns out he's a friend of Steve Crittle's So Small World. But this was produced by them and um, then it was remixed by a fantastic, enigmatic engineer called Nigel Green. He wouldn't even let you meet him, he just would take the track, mix it in private, in his own uh, studio. And what a sound, he's using breathy reverbs on the drums and stuff I never would have thought of, it's just genius. And, and the idea was, they were to produce and mix, this is Mike Hedges, Nigel Green, they were supposed to produce and mix our second album, which we were very happy about. It would have sounded amazing. But that never happened, we ended up with a different producer. That's another story. But a great track, Last War Song. People love this life, sort of the hope of peace in the world, that kind of thing. Yeah, fat chance, I know, but lovely atmospheric track. It's on, I think it's on the album, but it's, this is the best version, CD single version. So if you can bag a copy of that from Amazon or somewhere, I would. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. Okay, so track 20, I will be there, demo. I hope you're enjoying this commentary. I hope I'm not sounding too pompous or pretentious, but you know, it's all I can do to get these memories out. So uh, this is I will be there. Now this was, I say, a demo ended up on album two, the Promise album. And this was recorded at home, Isheen, I think. Drum machine. And we had bought a Fairlight computer by this time, two grand. Wish we had it still. The guitars DI'd, no amps. Uh, Yamaha piano again. And then you say, end it up on the album, so enjoy the demo. Should come and take us today 
track 21, this is Runaway, early demo version. Again, recorded at home, so no guitar amps, no drum kit. Nice song, ended up being a single off the second album. We actually did a video for this, which I bet nobody's ever seen. We filmed down in, in Brighton. Beachy head round there. Pretty nice video actually, if you can get a hold of a copy. Someone should put that on YouTube, maybe I'll do that later. But, you know, we're still making songs in a kind of a, an indie vibe. Although this was later produced differently by John Wetton uh, on the second album. He tried to take it to a more American AOR style, which was never us. But that's what record companies do, they put in producers. Yeah, they put in producers they think are going to bring something to the project. Uh, sometimes they do and sometimes they completely ruin it. So this was the second of those two options. Anyway, this is the original demo. To say we did a video for this in Brighton, which is ironic because that's where I live now. and. Uh, you can probably hear the seagulls in the background, sorry about that. Seaside town, there you see. So I haven't added the seagulls for sound effects. They just live outside. Anyway, I'm waffling now, so I'll skip on to the next track. See you there. Track 22, this is called Surrender. Again, the demo, we used to write songs in the studio and this was one of those, uh, Fairlight computer. Everything dry and de-eyed. It went on to become a big epic stage number, lots of sound effects on the intro and very dynamic track. Love it. Sounds better with Brian drumming. But, uh, and I think I might put that on. As a bonus track on the deluxe version, I'll try and put a version with drums. If I can, right? I can't promise, but... Surrender. Demo for album two. So we're getting on towards the end of the 80s now.
Enjoy. Track 23, Blown by the Wind. Demo. Yeah, just the basic drum loop going on. So we could get the ideas down. You can hear a version of this on album two, but this is the, the demo unreleased version. Yeah, pretty straightforward song. Not much I can say about this one. I think the Alzheimer's kicking in. I can remember the early stuff more than the, the later stuff, but there you go. See you on the next track. Oh, 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 oh,
Walk into the world. Track 24, as I said earlier. This is just Mark and myself recording for a live radio broadcast. You know, we were promoting, on tour promoting the album and stuff. And uh, we used to do a lot of these little radio station things. You go in for a chat and... Um, this place in Hamburg, Radio Hamburg, they had a little studio with a nice grand piano and some vintage mics. So I said, well, let's, can we just do a little, little track? Um, so we're playing this about six o'clock. You can see traffic going by, people waving through the windows and put us off on a few parts. We lost the track a little bit, but nice sound. Dream all your days, don't just dream on your Although this is just from a cassette tape the the engineer ran off for for me after we'd done it. The distortion there, sorry. That's a cassette for you. So that's the story on that one. Um, you can see a photo of us doing it on the deluxe version in the studio with the piano. Interesting. Track 25, World Pain. Story on this, this is Steve Crittle's guitar piece. Wow, it's like World War II, isn't it? This is the guitar piece he used to do to segue two tracks in the live set, Cold into Machine God with this bit in the middle. Again, used to bring the house down but I put this on because this is unreleased. This version was from a gig at the Docks, a place called the Docks in Hamburg, on the Reaper Barn. And I've just rescued this little snippet. It makes a great ringtone. So enjoy the pain of the world as channeled through Steve Crittle's guitar. And you can hear a different version of this if you listen to Cold Machine God. That's recorded from Grosse Freiheit, which is on this album. You can hear a different version of this guitar piece. World Pain, which it was christened by a newspaper, I think, a review of it the next day. Crazy. Track 26, actually two tracks. Cold segued into Machine God. A cheerful little medley. And as I was saying, it's got Steve Crittle's guitar bit in the middle to join the two tracks together. But these were great tracks and they were really were the heart of our live show at that time. We were kind of dark, moody, killing jokey sort of thing at that time and uh, yeah 
you hear the guitar riff there, paired up with the bass. And we never could really capture this in the studio. Certainly not with that producer that was trying to turn us into uh, sticks or, you know, the eagles or something. So it's great for me to put these, these live versions out because it captures more of the, the vibe of the energy of the live performance, I think, anyway. And these tracks were recorded for a, a video, a live video, which never went out. And um, Stevie had the tapes on his wardrobe for 20 years, top of his wardrobe, these massive tapes, and he was about to throw them out. So we decided we'd better do something with them. And uh, I took them down to Yellowfish Studios to try and digitize them. But they wouldn't play. They were so degraded and damp and uh, they would just clog up the heads on the, on the machine, ruin their machine. So I had to take them home. Um, they have an oven there to bake, but it was too small to fit these tapes in. They're on giant 18 inch reels. So I actually had to bake them in my oven overnight on a very low setting. Don't try that at home. Anyway, long story short, it worked. It dried the tapes out sufficiently to copy them over into Pro Tools, which was mixed, uh, this is what I mixed them with. And there are other versions of this, I think the boys did a little live album when they went over to Germany last year. You can hear the Teo's mix of it. But this is my mix of it, I like it. See what you think. I'll skip on to part two of this track, which is Machine God. So I'll see you there. Yeah, so hi again, this is me on uh, the commentary 
track. Skip it if you don't if you're not enjoying it. But this is Machine God, as I was saying. A whole other track, but we joined it together with Cold, with Steve's guitar piece. Another great live track, it's all about worshipping fighter planes and technology machineries. Machinery of war, really, I guess. Ask Mark, he wrote the lyrics. And again, this is from a gig in Grosse Freiheit, which is a famous club on top of the Kaiser Keller, I believe, in uh, Hamburg, where the Beatles used to play. We went down into that club one night and you can still feel the atmosphere. This was 89, so... Fantastic memories of that place. And it was our favorite gig because the, the management company was in Hamburg. We used to spend a lot of time there. And the crowd were fantastic in that place. So this is Machine God, live, Hamburg. 
track 27, I'll Take You Up. As you can hear, this is just Mark and his guitar. And he's just singing into a little cassette machine. But I thought I'd use this one, include this one on the album so you can hear how the songs developed, often just from this. And this one ended up being sort of a bombastic gig ending encore track with lots of solos and big endings and you know, woohoo, let's hear it and all that sort of stuff, which you had to do with a live crowd to get them on your side. And, but what a difference from this version. Nice and vulnerable sounding Mark Strobel to the other side which we had live. I'll take you up rescued from a cassette so quality again isn't, isn't the best but there you go it's, it's preserved now. Track 28 is called Too Little Love. And by this time, we'd done our second album and been out and everything. And we were back on tour, probably promoting that album. We had a couple of days off, so uh, we went into a studio in Frankfurt. And uh, just stuck down some tracks that we were working on. Again, they weren't really finished. We're just trying to get them into the set and develop them. Long, long yeah, Too Little Love. Different sound to this, a different sort of a studio and engineer that we had there. Interesting though. And this track's never been released. Um, so I hope you like it and there's a couple more to follow from the same Frankfurt sessions so uh, I'll see you on the other side with those he's in there sitting off Frisco Bay the jury gave him 99 years and a day Don't need forgiven, he just needs a way. 
This is 29, How Does It Feel? Again, it's a demo from the Frankfurt sessions. Without doubt, this would have been on our third album if we'd have got one. We never went on to do for various reasons. But a great track. Nicely played by everyone here. It's the full band lineup, of course. And this one is written by Mark about certain people's experiences on the Reaper Barn, I believe. But you better ask him. And a great track, nevertheless. How does it feel? So I'll shut up, let you listen, move on. She used to be 
track 30, Fire of Love. Again from those sessions while we were on tour in Germany. We were listening to Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, like everyone was at the time, but you know, there's also a bit of Doors and Jimi Hendrix type feel in this track. And this is where we were going at that time. would have been fantastic live but we only ever played it once or twice and even I can dance to this one so it must be good Texas, track 31. I don't really consider this song was ever finished, especially the choruses, but uh, such a nice atmosphere, great sound, I had to put this on. Steve Crittle with his Paris, Texas style slide. The ethereal keyboards and grasshopper noises and big drums, just love it. Again, we didn't get to play this live very often, maybe once or twice. And I'm sure it would have developed into a fantastic track, but that's another story.
Carolina down to Charlestonville Carrying a spell from some old Cherokee Handed down to him through the family He brought great-grandma to tend to the snakes Don't let one bite you Track 32, a song called Restless. This was live in Hamburg again. And as you can hear, it's just really a vehicle for an encore, a bass solo from Steve Lamb. And I wasn't going to put this on, but uh, a guy called Graham Drew said he liked it, so uh, it's for you, Graham. again it's a simple song but it just allowed us to feature a couple of solos and get the crowd rocking and uh, that's restless really i'll move on to the next track and i'll see you there
So this is the final track on this producer's commentary. Thanks for bearing with me. I hope you've enjoyed at least some of it. And I thought I'd finish with this track. It's called Time. And again, this is a demo. We did this at home. So no proper drums. But I've got to say, what a great vocal this is. Mark Strobel is really pouring his emotions into this fantastic feel to it. So listen to it properly without the commentary, please. It was never released, never featured on any album. But it's a shame because it sounds good now. And we're talking 23 years ago it was recorded. So thanks for listening. Thanks for buying the deluxe version. It's been a labor of love. Spent many years archiving and restoring these tracks. And it's a pleasure to finally get them out there to the digital world. Thanks a lot. Take care.